Fantastic. So new sanctions on Russia because the price of gas isn't quite high enough per megawatt hour. There's, the whole continent's going to be sharing one megawatt hour between them because that's all they'll be able to afford. Ladies and gentlemen, the purported leader of the free world threatening his fellow citizens, or at least those who happen to be gun owners. And for those brave right wing Americans who say it's all about Keeping America, keeping America is independent and safe. If you want to fight against a country, you need an F-15. You need a, something a little more than a gun. No, I'm not joking. Think about this. Think about the rationale we use. That's an F-15, by the way, is an American fighter jet. Joe Biden is saying that these days, if you want to stand up to the government of the United States, it's not enough to rely on Smith & Wesson. You've got to have the big stuff. Uh, Mr. Biden is modifying Hilaire Belloc. Whatever happens, we have got the F-15 and they have not. It shouldn't be necessary to point out even to brain-dead Joe that if you think about the rationale, as he puts it, this is total bunkum. Almost exactly a year ago, Joe Biden and his alleged global hyperpower, the guys who account for over 40 percent of the planet's military spending, were defeated, humiliated, by goat herds with fertilizer. The world's most lavishly funded, quote unquote, intelligence agency, the CIA, cautioned that Kabul could fall to the Taliban within 90 days. In fact, it fell to the Taliban within 90 hours, but that's close enough for government work. The Taliban took Afghanistan while the US Secretary of State was tweeting about his productive talks with the Canadian foreign minister. Now the Taliban has fighter jets, because the great Satan, as it scuttled out of town, left enough hardware to make the fire-breathing mullahs the eighth or ninth biggest military power on the planet. They don't really need any of those jets. They like to climb into them once in a while. They don't know which buttons you push to make them go. Uh, but they like uh, uh, letting the Chinese generals inspect the state-of-the-art stuff when the Politburo jets in from Peking. Nothing works. Over there, or here at home. Over there, far away, the world's most lavishly funded military loses to illiterate goat herds. Right here, closer to home, the price of gas hits an all-time record high. Look at this. German power rises to record 800 euros per megawatt hour. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 800 euros was the all-time record high at the weekend by Monday. Monday, I'm terribly sorry. By Monday, we had a new all-time record high. Uh, look at this one here. Europe's benchmark power price breaks 1,000 euros for first time. That's 10 times higher than what it was a year ago. And the rate of increase is galloping. It's going up about 10% a day in Germany. Do I hear 1,200 euros? Oh, yeah, here we are. La République Française, quote, French wholesale electricity prices have surged in recent days to record highs with the year ahead baseload power price at a record high of 1,200 euros per megawatt hour. Uh, I was thinking the other day of the third Viscount Palmerston, mainly because it's less distressing than thinking about Boris Johnson or Keir Starmer, Jacinda Trudeau or Justin Ardern. Lord Palmerston... Uh, famously, oh, there he is. Look at that. Can we get some mutton chops on the next prime minister? Can, can we get Liz Truss in mutton chops? That's what we need. That's what we need to save the day. Uh, Lord Palmerston famously said that England had no eternal allies or perpetual enemies, only eternal interests. Conventional powers still think like that. And whatever you think of them, China and Russia are in that sense very conventional powers. They have eternal interests. And they pursue them very single-mindedly. In the Western world, we have replaced eternal interests with eternal attitudes. And once we strike those attitudes, they're forever. If you want a picture that sums it up, here is the heir to the thrones of the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Jamaica, Papua New Guinea, Belize, on and on. I could just list them all until the top of the hour. Uh, here he is following the science all the way to a talismanic Swedish schoolgirl. That is pathetic and it ought to be disqualifying. In good times, it's uh, heartwarming or hilarious, according to taste. 
But it's not so funny when times aren't good, when inflation is up to 10, no, 13, wait a minute, 17, no, oh, look at this here. UK inflation could top 22%, Goldman Sachs warns. Let's see, when was the last time UK inflation hit 22.4%? Oh, 1975. That was a different world. We were still more or less a conventional nation state pursuing Lord Palmerston's eternal interests. Now we're striking our eternal attitudes. As we reported yesterday, the German agriculture minister says starvation is subordinate to climate change policy. So you're starving to death, but that's good for the planet. They mean it. They say it openly. And they do so because, as one viewer put it the other day, these days a beaten and cowed citizenry turn to the state for handouts before they turn on the state. So the eternal attitudes remain. In order to show how much we care about sea levels in the Maldives in the 22nd century, Europe mortgaged its energy needs to the Kremlin. So when our leaders then decided that Tsar Putin must be brought to his knees, it was pretty obvious that you would be on your knees long before Vlad ever is. Still and all, it's interesting to me that both American and German politicians are now basically threatening their own citizens, and the French president is declaring that the age of abundance is over. I don't recall him using that as his election slogan six months ago.